Hey guys, check out this uh, 120 Proto. We're replacing the timing belt. The, well, let's just keep it simple. It's not timing belt and water pump. It's the big front engine job. And why is that? Because, well, it's not just the timing belt. It's the idler, the tensioner, because there's bearings in there. You know, you can see there's a bearing in that unit there. There's a bearing in the water pump, and they leak eventually on all cars. And, of course, we've removed them at the moment, but all the idler bearings that go on these here... But I just wanted to demonstrate again, just to show you some of the mess that's there sometimes. And this isn't unusual, but for the vehicles that get used off-road a lot, um, you just get a lot of dust and dirt. It even gets in behind the timing cover, right? You can see this tensioner has actually been replaced at some point. So the previous one, it looks like they've replaced it, some aftermarket brand. Um, we've got an NTN tensioner, so it may not have been replaced, or it might be... Uh, Either way, it's a good brand. That's the genuine one Toyota uses. So, but this uh, idler, yeah, they don't normally have green on the bearing, so that'll be another brand you might be able to see. I'll have a look at it once we get it off. Is easier. Oh, it's GMB. Yep, you can see the GMB, which is generally a Japanese brand, a good brand. So that's good. Um, and the belt. Well, I guess it may be a GMB or some other Gates or Deco. Don't know. Anyway, we're going to get off. We're replacing this. I just wanted to show you. So it's a bit, this is a bit of a tech tip, right? I've mentioned it in other videos, but as I said, sometimes we have to mention it a few times so everybody gets it. Um, and that is when you refit your timing cover, besides cleaning all this up, which is what we're about to do, we've got that in our full time. We've brought some water pump timing belt videos on YouTube, but the ones that go for hours and hours, the detailed ones are in the VIP group. I notice a lot of people don't want you know, they're complaining about long videos and, you know, blah, 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 you know, I talk too much, like now. Well, you know, we try and keep them shorter on YouTube. If you want that maximum information to sit there for hours, you want to get yourself into the VIP group because you can sit there and watch videos that go for hours and hours and become a real expert. Now, at the end of the day, all this is going to get cleaned up. We've demonstrated in those videos. Clean the, the timing cover. But for the people that, you know, want to get their aftermarket parts or just replace the belt, here's some free information for you. Um, on the timing belt cover, it's a rubber seal and it doesn't press that well. You can see here, if you have a look, you can see the line there where the point, the highest point of the seal touches there, but maybe not so much here. And if it's over tightened here and here, it flexes the cover out and it doesn't quite seal that well in the middle there, right? So couple of tips are don't over tighten these they're meant to be something like i don't know five or maybe eight newton meters i think if you over tighten you're just going to pull these studs out anyway they just need to be nice but what we do is we apply some uh, molly coat or you can use a very light amount of grease now you don't want to smother it and put a lot and the reason i don't like grease is when it gets hot it can melt and it may go that way and towards the belt and we don't want any grease or oils on any of these components clean and dry so that's why we use the molly coat it does stay there um on that rubber seal and then that will just help seal between the the seal there it does help a little bit but do expect there to be dust and if you're playing bulk holes mud and everything in there and just think about that mud how it's going to react with your bearing and stuff like that and if that does fail that belt is what's connecting your engine moving parts from the bottom to the top which if it breaks uh, yeah that's your uh, that's your engine you're going to bend valves or something similar uh, so you want to avoid that so well, what we'll do just to make this video a little bit longer we're going to aim for about 10 minutes any other tech tips along the way on this job this um, big front engine job we're doing now um, i'll include in the video and one other little tip so if you want to contact me for parts the best time is monday morning from 8 a.m in a text message please include your name vehicle details of what you're after it's that time of the year or any time of the year i could be on holidays so don't expect a response that monday 80 percent of the time you're going to get that but the other 20%, I'm probably going to be away that day or that week or whatever the case may be. So feel free to uh, check my Facebook pages, the Prado Hospital, and that may have a message about when I'm around or not or whatever the case may be or whatever the best day is this week. But generally Mondays are the go. And bada bing, if you need the phone number, it's listed on that page. You'll find it by watching more videos, get yourself educated. Please keep watching the other videos. If there's any other important info, I'll hit you up in this video. Sit tight. All right, so we've just cleaned it up a little bit and I've come up with another couple of tech tips that I've probably put in a video, but we've got that many videos and I probably didn't put it in some of them. And this is the problem why I say watch all of them until the end because 
if I mention something that's important in one video and then I don't in another because I think I've told you already, but then you watch five videos, but the other three you didn't watch, you're confident from five, but the three you didn't watch happen to be the ones or the one that had that important bit of information, right? So I'm going to give you an important bit of information here for everybody to help save you any hassles. Recently we had someone complete this big front engine job or timing belt change and they had a problem where they thought they found it one tooth out, which it just can't be one tooth out. Now, we'll just quickly go through these timing marks again. And you can quite easily see that somebody's put some pink on this. This is previous, not us. But you can see the mark under the pink. And you can see the arrow. You can put a bit of pink, blue, any colour you like, mate. But the main thing is you've got that mark lined up. Now, there's also one on the crankshaft. You can check that one if you like. But not even any really need to go there. Let's just go there anyway, right? We've got it off, so... Can you see that one there down there? There's that one there as well. You can see that's all hunky-dory. You can see there's a little bit of wet on the line. I know it's hard to see because I'm struggling at a reach to get down there because I didn't plan to go there, right? You can see that's good. And there's also one. The one that matters is this one here on the side of the pump, right? You can see that arrow there and the blue mark, right? It's all hunky-dory. Now, the tip is I don't know how he got it one tooth out. Sorry, I'm just trying to re get my hands at me. I don't know how he got it one tooth out, but it wouldn't have been one tooth out to start off with. So I'm tipping what he may have done is tried to turn the engine over by the 19 mil camshaft bolt, right? Where you can see people have been on this before and that's fine. The 19 mil camshaft bolt is what he might have done. And it may have jumped and skipped the tooth even, right? You know, and look, uh, but I'm not sure I wasn't there. The other thing that may have happened, you know, turning it one way or the other. The way we turn over the engine to line up the timing mark is always by the 22 mil down on the crankshaft there. That one there. See that 22 mil? Use the 22 mil on the crankshaft. It's easy to get to with all your fan and everything out of the way. It's a little bit harder with the fan there, but it's still doable. And go clockwise. Clockwise if you can. That way, that the bolt torque on the crankshaft, it's some massive thing like 300 and... 60 newton meters or something. I can't remember something in the 300s anyway. It's F tight. Okay, that's F tight So we don't you're not going to accidentally undo it anyway You can actually use that bolt to hold To undo this bolt as well because this is only 98 newton meters, right? If you ever undo that bolt down there, you're very unlucky. It is tight and make sure it goes back tight again uh, If you do so if you want to turn it backwards a little bit, let's say for this one for example the mark was just here, we just needed, to, we didn't want to go all the way around, we just wanted to go back. So we go back, but we go back a little bit extra, and then we go forwards again to bring it, the, so that way the tension, it's tight on this side of the belt, which is, you know, it's, that's the way it's designed to turn. Anyway, whatever, that was your little tech tip, right? Use the crankshaft, did I use the right word? Because I often say camshaft, no, crankshaft. I know what I'm talking about, same as I might say, 17 mil and it's a nine I'm pretty sure it's a 19 mil but you know what I really have to put a socket on to be sure doesn't matter how many I've done but anyway it might seem funny but that's the truth I'm pretty sure it's 19 mil <laughs> pretty I'm, I'm 99 percent anyway guys uh that was the tech tip go clockwise crankshaft butter bing let's see what else we got for you right, one of the last little tips is this was a GMB aftermarket bearing Let's just have it, it's been on there for what, 120,000 Ks do we think? Something like that. Let's have a spin of it and see what it sounds like. I'll shut up for a minute. Okay, that, that's got a bit of noise in it. And it's got a bit of play in it also. And if you have a look on the end of the pulley, you can see where the uh, timing belt, see the edge there, right? You know, it's not sitting square on the pulley like the genuine ones do. The other issue was there was a lot of some type of grease on here. So when we um, undid the bolt, it was hard to turn. We had to keep the tool on there to get it out. And that was because of the resistance from grease and muck on this. So we gave that a clean up. And of course, with the genuine, you know, it works spot on. That's just, uh, you know, it spins, moves freely in and out, you know, the way it's meant to. So anyway, guys, so the tip is genuine parts. That's what we supply in our kit and just leave that dry and clean. So clean that bolt. There's no need to replace it unless you see, you're gonna see a bit of, you're gonna see a little bit of wear marks on it, but there's nothing there, you know, you can't even catch your, you can't feel it in any way. So it's not a wear mark that matters. 
Um, I know it seems putting a bit of grease on that could be the go, and some grease could be okay in some conditions, but I think the best bet personally with the materials used, it's, it's a stainless sleeve inside there, all right? See that? And there's all, this is stainless as well, all right? So, well, I think it is. It looks like it. It would seem to be, and they work really well together. I didn't say I put that in the right way, but just trying to show you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you got something out, please give us the thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn the bell on. The bell's next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that email alert for the next important bit of information. Thanks for watching. See ya.